Hello class. Um, today, we're taking a look at volcanoes. So what exactly are volcanoes? Um, how do they form? Where do they form? Um, and what are some of the benefits of volcanoes? So uh, volcanoes themselves, uh, they change the surface of the earth. That's one of the reasons why we're concerned looking at them, um, because they do alter um, the earth. They change the surface, they create new land, um, they release heat from the earth's interior, and um, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but we think on the planet Venus that it doesn't have enough volcanoes. So uh, that possibly in the past, in order to release its internal heat, it basically just melted the entire surface to release that heat. It built up that much. So a uh, good thing we have volcanoes. Um, and then they release and enrich and alter our atmosphere with carbon dioxide, nitrogen, um, which is very important for you and I, and water vapor as well, also coming from volcanoes. All right. Um, so what is a volcano? Uh, again, you should be filling out uh, this page of the note sheet. We're going to fill out this entire first page. If I go too fast, feel free to stop, uh, back up, or do whatever you need to do to get all the blanks filled in. Okay, so a volcano is a mountain built from its own erupted material. So this could be lava erupted. It could be something called tephra, um, and, and it builds up a volcano. What is an eruption? It's when something comes out of a volcano. So it can be lava, which you're probably thinking of, ash, steam, gases, uh, of anything that comes out of there uh, constitutes an eruption. There are three stages in a volcano's life. Um, they're not linear, so it's not like you where you start out as a baby and you become a toddler and then you're an adolescent, then a teenager, and then a young adult and blah, blah, blah. But um, they, they can go from A to C to B to A and, and bounce around. And it just depends on one thing, when they last erupted. So an active one has erupted in the last 100 years. A good example of that, Mount St. Helens. It erupted in 2004 and 1980. That's two eruptions in the last 100 years. Uh, a dormant volcano is one that has not erupted in the last 100 years. We can use Mount St. Helens as an example again, because prior to its 1980 eruption, it had been 123 years before it erupted. So it had actually gone into the dormant stage before, before it became active again. Uh, another example is an extinct volcano. This is one that has not erupted in over 1,000 years. Uh, it doesn't mean that an extinct volcano will not erupt again. It's just been a while since it has. Those are the different stages of a volcano. So how do we get volcanoes? Um, well, the analogy I like to use um, is if you've ever taken a ketchup packet, which I'm sure you never have because you're probably good kids, and you've squeezed the ketchup packet as hard as you can until what? It blows up, right? Okay, so deep in the earth, rocks are under lots of heat and pressure. And what this does is it causes rocks to melt. So they take on a liquid form instead of a solid form. And once they take on a liquid form, um, they become less dense and that causes them to rise. So it's kind of the same idea of your ketchup in uh, the little packet of ketchup. As you squeeze it, the ketchup is going to find the weak spot in that packaging to escape from. And magma is the same way as it's trying to rise up into the the Earth's uh, lithosphere, it's going to find cracks and gaps and weak areas that it can work its way up. And if it actually makes it through one of those to the surface, then you're going to have uh, a volcano erupting and a volcano forming. So that's how we get volcanoes. Again, if you didn't get the blanks, just back up and listen to what I said again and you'll fill them in. It'll be okay. All right, so where are some volcanoes in the western United States? You can see most of them are located in Washington, Oregon, and California. That's because there is a subduction zone. Um, off of the coast of Washington, Oregon, California, which is pushing one plate underneath the North American plate. There's a few scattered deeper into the continent, but it's harder for volcanoes to form there. They're mostly along the coast. Okay, so where do volcanoes form in general? Um, there are three areas that they form. It's directly tied to the theory of plate tectonics, which means volcanoes are formed because plates move. The first is at divergent boundaries where plates are splitting apart, and most of the magma on Earth reaches the surface at divergent boundaries, but we don't see that magma. Why? Because it's underwater. Okay, at convergent boundaries, this is another place where volcanoes form, um, where we have one plate being forced underneath another and melting and producing magma to feed volcanoes and chains of volcanic um, mountains or islands. And the last place is what's called a hotspot. Um, hotspot volcanoes are ones that are not um, located on a plate boundary, like all these volcanoes you can see around the Ring of Fire, these are on a plate boundary, but not Hawaii right here, and not some of this guy over here, hanging out in the middle all by themselves. We're going to talk about hotspot volcanoes later. 
Okay, what are the parts of a volcano? Real quick, we have the magma chamber. This is the storage area for the erupted materials. We have the vent that travels between the magma chamber and the surface and brings those erupted materials to the surface. And the crater is a bowl-shaped opening at the top of the volcano. All right, so what's going to happen today is you're gonna use some textbook pages. You're gonna do a uh, worksheet out of the book to review some of these concepts that we just talked about. Good luck.